All right. Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our Ash Wednesday service. Ash Wednesday is a great way to set yourself up for a holy and meaningful Lent. And tonight we have an opening prelude. And then we'll have our Ash Wednesday service. Tom is going to be preaching tonight. And we'll, if you have your ashes with you, uh, any kind of ashes at all, or if you had your little container of ashes that we sent out from St. Stephen's, you can put them on or not. It's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with our prelude in just a second here. We want to be sure to be able to call that up and have it be, have it be ready. So, again, this is Jim and Jeannie Strathy. Oh, so share sound. Here we go. Throughout this land and days and nights, we turn to walk. The inward wound We're meeting Christ Our guide and light We live in hope Till Easter day The pilgrim Christ The Lamb of God Who found in weakness Greater power Embraces us The lost and flawed And leads us to is rising up. We bear the silence, cross, and pain of human burdens, human strife, while sisters, brothers help sustain our courage till the feast of life. And though the road is hard and steep, the Spirit ever calls us on Through Calvary's dying dark and deep Until we see the coming dawn So let us choose the path of one Who wore for us the crown of thorn And slept in death Whose death Good Friday brings On Easter day We'll rise again Throughout this land And days and nights We turn to walk The inward way We're meeting Christ Our God and light We live in All right, I'm going to go ahead and share our um, share our service bulletin tonight as well so that you can follow along. And as I do that, I'd like to invite you to participate as much as you feel comfortable doing. And please remember just because of the nature of Zoom that if too many people are talking at once, it gets a little chaotic. So probably stay muted until we offer prayers or the peace or something like that. And you can then go ahead and say the responses as loud as you want to, as long as you stay muted. So here is our service bulletin. And we begin with our call to worship. If I say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll have a reading from God's holy word. A reading from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways. Is it that they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall call for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer food, your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like this noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. 
He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower in the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children. On those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all ye hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The second reading is from the second letter of Corinthians. We entreat on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance and inflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness, by, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown, and yet we are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, so they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good evening. Hi. I was speaking with a friend last night about a book he was reading. The book is called The Invisible Man by Ralph M. L. Ellison. The story goes that the invisible man, who remains nameless, becomes the victim of repeated injustice, physical violence, and marginalization. He desires to express his identity and improve the condition of the oppressed. But largely because of the color of his skin, the invisible man is silenced. He and, that, and the people who the invisible man is trying to help become victims of violence. Ironically, much of this violence comes at the hand of other persons of color. While we were talking, my friend said, you know what? Justice isn't just about fairness and equality and inclusion. Justice is about all of that and more. Doing more and going further sounds very Christian and not overly profound. But somehow when I heard it, my friend say it in this context of the book, I found it very profound. The invisible person needs more than a fair playing field. They need help. They need advocates. And this discussion made me think of my favorite metaphor. I'm not sure if I shared this with everybody, but here it is. I was born on third base, which means I am privileged in every way imaginable. Probably if I tried to steal home, the umpire would call me safe whether I was or not. My race, class, educational opportunities, gender, all spells success in our society. I didn't have to bat or get a hit or even run the bases. As a person of privilege, I arrived on third base. So while I stand on third base, others like the invisible man are starting at the home plate with two strikes, a broom for, broomstick for a bat, and Justin Verlander on the mound. What other chances? So what does this metaphor tell us about justice? It tells us that some of us have a lot of privilege and opportunities to succeed, while others like the invisible man barely have a chance to make ends meet, let alone survive. So if this is injustice, what does justice look like? Justice is defined as equitable treatment, being fair and reasonable, respecting the rights of everyone. So wouldn't justice be both of us starting at home plate with an equal opportunity to get a hit, a level playing field? That's a start, but there's more that we're called to give. One might ask, why should we give more? Isn't a level playing field and a fair game enough? Jesus Christ and our baptismal covenant says no. Fairness and equality of opportunity are not enough. We also need to love and give abundantly. We need an expansive view of justice. We need to give justice and to give more than justice requires. God loves us so much that God sent Jesus Christ to lead us, to teach us, forgive us, bless us, redeem us, and even die for us. Is that justice? Is that leveling the playing field? Is that giving us what we really earned and deserve? No, it's justice and more. It's an abundant love and favor we receive from God just because we are. Jesus calls us to do the same, to give others not just what they've earned, but to give abundantly and freely. In this expanded view of justice, I would demand the batter get a real bat or start with no strikes or start on third base with me or better yet, switch places with me. Today's gospel is found in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Just before today's reading in chapter five, Jesus calls on us to do justice and more. 
Jesus is telling them on the mountain, the mount to give abundantly, regardless of merit. Just before Jesus says, just before our reading, Jesus said, if anyone forces you to go in a mile, also go a second mile. If someone sues you for your coat, give them your cloak as well. Give to everyone who begs from you and refuse no one who wants to borrow money from you. If anyone strikes your right cheek, turn the other also. This does not mean that you don't duck when they swing. It does not mean that we act foolishly or recklessly, but it does mean that we forgive. We do what is fair, we do justice and we do more. We love and give abundantly, just as God does for us. In this part of the sermon, we read uh, Sermon on the Mount we read today, Jesus said, build up yourselves treasures in heaven for where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. What if the treasure Jesus is talking about is about giving abundantly, not just to those who we love and those who we think deserve it, but to all. Imagine heaven filling up with all this abundant giving, the greatest treasure of all, love. It's already happening. We give abundantly when we tirelessly work to develop and distribute a vaccine. We live, give abundantly when we tend a boiler around the clock so our church doesn't freeze. We give abundantly when we help a homeless friend praying for them, helping them help themselves, celebrating their success and being there when they are less than successful. We give abundantly when we open our doors to the community, welcoming a place for AA teams to meet or groups to meet. We give abundantly when we restore normalcy in each other's lives with drive through pancakes and cupcakes. We give abundantly when we pray. We pray for those we love and those who are not as lovable. We pray for those who don't have anyone to pray for them. And we pray for those who cannot pray for themselves. We give abundantly when we gather on the phone with our prayer partners. We give abundantly when we care for the invisible person, whether they are homeless, hungry, voiceless, nameless, plagued with physical or mental illness, emotional illness, or oppressed or the victims of violence. We give abundantly when we ask how our smartphones are made or how our food comes to us. We give abundantly when we give from our heart what we can, whether it's a prayer or a phone call, a letter, recycling, or acknowledging and advocating for the invisible person. All of these treasures we are storing up today through this parish and through our community. In many ways, we are already giving abundantly beyond what simple justice would require. There's no action or prayer too small. We do what we can when we can, little by little, by turning the cheek, going the second mile, offering our cloak. We not only build up the treasure in heaven, we also build the kingdom of God. This Lenten season is a good time to think about how our expanded understanding of injustice includes giving and loving a boy abundantly, as Jesus did in the Gospels, continues to do with us, and will continue to do for all time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. And now... I invite you, if you have ashes, to get them ready. And if not, that's okay too. But we're going to have the words that we say over the ashes. And then we're going to, those of us who have them, are going to put them on if we wish. And I love this prayer because it really does, it's an ancient prayer and it calls us all into the kind of mindset that we need during Lent to do what Tom was talking about, to work to build God's kingdom by going beyond. 
Lent shouldn't be just a time when we feel downtrodden or when we feel like we have to sort of put on a sad face. It should be a time when we really think deeply about who we are. And that's what this prayer calls us to do. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of their notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our moral nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your generous gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And the words of institution for the ashes are, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All right. And now we'll continue with Psalm 51. Start with Psalm 51 to be, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you have I sin only, only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for tru truth deep within me. And will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God. And my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord. And my mouth shall proclaim your praise. You had desired it. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Most merciful, most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought and word and deed and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not forgiven others and we, as we have been forgiven. 
Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, the hypocrisy, and the impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those who are more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our impertinent love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and for suffering, and to our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts, towards our neighbor and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power to com and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere heart and with sincere heart belies his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him, which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. And you can go ahead if peace. you to go to unmute and uh, share peace with everybody. Peace to all of you. Peace. Peace, peace. 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 everyone. Peace. Bye. Peace, everyone. Oh, I love peace, it. Peace, Ron. Peace. Hi, Ron. Peace. Hi, Janice. Peace. Hi, Janice. Peace. Peace. Yeah. peace, Tom. Excellent sermon. Hey, yes. Janice. Peace. Hey, Rita. Peace. Hi, John. Hey, Aletha. Peace. Hi. Oh, my goodness. A little Andy has been pretty engaged throughout this whole <laughs> thing, I think. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> my sister was here, Andrea. If you're still here, peace uh, to you. Oh, I share the peace with everyone. Thank you. Yep. Hello, peace Andrea. Everyone. Welcome. Hi, Andrea. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. hey, All Trish, the way here peace. from Maryland. Trish. Oh my goodness! Wow. <laughs> yeah. so Lauren are here today. <laughs> oh, oh, there's there's Molly. Hi, Molly. Peace be with you. <laughs> peace. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we're going to now uh, we're going to now conclude with spiritual communion, and for our spiritual communion, I will offer the prayer and hold up the elements, and I offer these on behalf of all of us who are not able to physically receive our Lord through the sacrament of communion at this time. And we do receive him, of course, through the word that we have heard and through the presence that we know that he has in each and every one of us. But now we pray for that special presence in communion. 
In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that they may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affection of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Amen. And at this point, we don't really have any particular announcements. We're glad that so many of you are here with us tonight. And I really invite you all into reflection on what it means to have a Holy Lent. It's not about giving things up. It's really about finding a way to go deeper. And with that in mind, I've asked Mita to read something to us, which I believe is from Pope Francis. So Mita, why don't you go ahead and read that? You're muted though. Okay, thank you for that introduction. Um, I was listening to uh, the first reading of referencing light in the darkness. And of course we all are familiar with Amanda Gorman's famous poem, poem be brave to be the light. And with a different kind of worship, a different kind of church, a different kind of life and food insecurity, it's almost unbelievable that some people to give up dessert or meat makes no sense because they had to give it up before Lent because they couldn't afford it. So this actually gives us all options to be that light in the darkness and to strengthen ourselves and to truly make deep, wonderful sacrifices uh, during this season of Lent. Do you want to fast this Lent? Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints. I'm gonna repeat that one. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled and fast from words and be silent so that you can listen. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's beautiful, Mira. Yeah. And now, yeah. and now we'll have the blessing. Almighty and incarnate God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, now that we are in Lent, we are giving up our Alleluia's for the season. So if you got one of our um, Ash Wednesday kits, you know that you got a little sheet that said Alleluia. And you can see I colored mine. And so I'm going to fold up my Alleluia and put it in my little box for the rest of Lent, and we will get these out on Easter Sunday. God willing, maybe we'll be able to meet in person down by the river on Easter morning. Depends on how things are going with the virus counts and what the bishop's guidance is. But whether we are or not, we can all take our alleluias out on Easter Sunday. So, so we're at the beginning of this journey. And so with that in mind, 
There are no alleluias in our sending forth today. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yep. And it sounds so strange to not have that alleluia, doesn't it? It really does. It does. So I'm going to say goodbye to our folks who are watching the recording. I'm going to turn off the recording now. So thank you for being with us online.